Welcome back to the Getting Started series of Centerprise Data Integrator. In part five of the series, we are going to have a look at the concept of parameters in Centerprise Data Integrator. Parameters play a very important role in the reusability and configurability of the data flows. Let's go ahead and examine the data flow that we created for sample two, that was data flow complex. So if we open this data flow, you can see here there are a couple of sources. Those are created uh, by pointing to existing files. And on the destination side, the destination is pointing to existing database tables. That means this flow is, is created for uh, data that is already existing. And uh, it is pointing to constant data. However, if I want to take this data flow and I want to use it for uh, a file that has same structure but not the same data and is coming from coming from somewhere else in that case I'll be using the concept of parameters in center price parameters are of two types one is explicitly user defined parameters and second is any source or any destination which has a file paths or database information or web information it becomes parameters automatically when it goes to scheduling and we'll have a look at that in a moment. So say in this example, I would like to change a few things when I'm running this data flow. I would like to change the source file paths and point to new files. And at the same time, I would like to use uh, a parameter to specify um, um, effective date for my data quality rules. So how do I go about it? I will drag and drop a parameter and if I go to the parameters property, I'll specify a new parameter and call it effective date. And once I have this uh, parameter specified, I pick the date type and uh, give it a default value of uh, December 31st, 2010. So this is the default value. And once I have that specified, my parameter is available for mapping. If you recall, our uh, data quality was working on uh, property tax and was checking if the property tax is zero or not. Let's add a twist to this uh, scenario and uh, put an effective date. So what I'm saying is this data quality rule is effective only when this effective date is matched. And I would like to specify this effective date from outside of this data flow. So let's go ahead and do the mapping first. So the data quality rules has the effective date and that is coming from parameters. Now I go to the data quality and uh, in the rules, I will, I will put a check if effective date is greater than today, then always return true, otherwise you check for this rule. If I do this, it means that it is going to check this rule only when it is effective. You can specify any effective date from outside now and control this behavior. So this data quality is now dependent on this effective date. So we just did that and now we can save this and I have saved another sample here. It is doing exactly the same thing and I have put the effective date and now I'm calling it data flow complex with parameters. Now if I take this data flow complex with parameters and go to scheduler, so I go to server explorer and uh, go to schedule jobs and I schedule a new job where I point to this newly created data flow with parameters. So once I did that, after that I go to job parameters tab. I can see here all my implicit and explicit parameters. So this is my user defined parameter. And if I click on this, it is uh, the default value that, that I specified there. It is December 31st, 2010. Say I want this rule to be effective of at March 31st, 2011. I'll go here and I will point it to March 31st, 2011. So by doing this, I'm telling this application that don't use that, uh, use that data quality rule 
before March 31st, or you can specify any date here. So that's how I'm controlling that behavior from outside the data flow. So this is the explicit parameter. And as you can see here, implicitly application has scanned the, the data flow and it has figured out that the source has uh, two file paths, loans and tags, and it's showing me two file paths here. So I can come here and I can point it to something else and the sales is tax.xls. I want to point it to some tax1.xls that is a new tax file and we'll be using that file. So this is how you can change the source file paths. Similarly, on the destination side, you can see here it is showing me the database configuration info for California loans and other state loans. I can change any of these two and point it to a new information. So that's how from scheduler you can control the behavior of the data flow and uh, the same data flow can be used for a totally different set of data. This concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching the video.